guys, I'm Dukey03 and I'm here to count down my top 10 Sega Genesis games of all time. Now I grew up as a Sega kid, so this list was very hard for me to make. All the games in this list, including the honorable mentions, are just fantastic games. If some of your favorites aren't on my list, then be sure to mention them in the comments below. Now let's get started. Number 10. As a kid, I grew up watching the movies my dad liked, which included the Rambo movies and a shitload of Schwarzenegger films. Knowing I loved action movies, for one of my birthdays, my parents must have seen this game on the shelf, with this badass Arnold clone unloading a machine gun on some robotic alien thing and bought it for me. I remember playing the shit out of this game and then crying because it was just so fucking hard. It wasn't until this year that I finally beat this game. Contra Hardcore is like any other Contra except dialed up to 12. The weapons are badass, the music is badass, the enemies all explode, and you can play as a fucking werewolf with a Gatling gun for an arm wearing sunglasses. Can you fit any more 90s badassery into a single character? He's tall as shit though, so I always play as Brownie, the little robot with the double jump. That's another awesome thing about this game. Each of the four characters are different and have their own unique weapon upgrades. If you haven't played this game before, go check it out. If you have played it before and gave up because it's so damn difficult, it makes every other Contra I've played seem easy, then check out the Japanese version of the game where you can actually have a health bar so you don't lose a life in one hit. Contra Hardcore is just an amazing game with shitloads of action. It had to make my list. Number 9! This was a toughie. Most people would say I'm an idiot and that Streets of Rage 2 is the better game, but I grew up playing the original Streets of Rage and to this day I still prefer it over its sequel. Streets of Rage is a beat em up game set in a dark crime ridden city that has been taken over by a criminal syndicate led by Mr. X. You play as X Cop Axel, current cop and boxing expert Adam, and X Cop and Judo specialist Blaze. You take to the streets and beat the living shit out of every punk, junkie, and, uh, pro wrestler out there. This game can be pretty tough, but with a friend you should be able to beat it. This game had two player combo attacks if you hold on to each other, and some really interesting bosses. You've got the pro wrestler whom I mentioned earlier, dude looks like the ultimate warrior. You've got Freddy Krueger's punk ass son, and, uh, fat ballpark guy that breathes fire. I think one of the coolest yet douchiest things about this game is how once you reach the final boss, he'll offer you a job as his second hand man. If your friend happens to accept his offer, then you've got to take it upon yourself to kick his ass before getting to fight the final boss. The boss is also cheap as fuck because he's got a machine gun, so hopefully you can trust in your friend to make the right choice and help you take this asshole down. If you liked Streets of Rage 2 better, then just pretend I was talking about that game instead this whole time. There's not a lot of difference when it comes to the story. You've just got a stupid kid on rollerblades instead of having Adam. But Mr. X is back and up to his same old antics. Streets of Rage is among my favorite beat em up games of all time, and that's why it's here at number 9 on my list. Number 8. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles The Hyperstone Heist is my favorite Ninja Turtles game of all time. In this game, Shredder has shrunk New York City using the Hyperstone, and it's up to the Turtles to save the day. The visuals and gameplay in this game are just top notch when it comes to beat em ups. And just like in Contra Hardcore, pretty much everything explodes when you kill it in this game. There's not much else to say about this game, especially if you've played a TMNT beat em up game before. They're all fairly similar, but very well done. Because of this game's massive fun factor, especially when played with a friend, TMNT Hyperstone Heist takes the number 8 spot on my list. Number 7 Shadowrun is a game unlike any other game I've ever played, especially on the Genesis. It's a cyberpunk's dream. Taking place in a futuristic version of Seattle, this game is a classic RPG through and through while still blazing new trails with its use of the Matrix, guns, and cybernetic upgrades. 
You still have all the fantasy races like elves, trolls, and dwarves, but instead of having bows and axes, they've got shotguns, machine guns, magic, and wolverine-like claws. The point of the game is to find out and kill whoever murdered your brother. This was all some pretty deep shit, especially back in the Genesis days. At the start of the game, you get to pick between three, dare I call them, job classes. One is a technology expert who thrives in the Matrix. One is a shaman who can cast powerful offensive as well as healing magic. And the other is some sort of cybernetic samurai who has implants that make him an absolute killing machine in the real world. You can still gain a bit of access to each class's abilities, but you'll only ever master the aspects of your chosen class. You take on jobs called Shadow Runs to gain money and karma, which is this game's version of experience points. From high security mega corporation buildings to absolute shithole ghettos, you'll explore each and every area of Seattle to solve the mystery behind your brother's death and find his killer. This game is just so awesome. The only thing that could have made this game better is if you could have the option to play it co-op. You do get other shadow runners that you can hire to come along for the journey, but they're all controlled by the computer and you can swap to control them yourself if you'd like. This game was my first taste of an RPG that wasn't Dragon Quest or Final Fantasy, and it completely blew my mind as a kid. I highly recommend checking this game out. I also heard there's a Super Nintendo version that's supposed to be pretty good, but it's almost completely different when it comes to gameplay and plot. So you can check that game out as well. Number 6 Number six on my list is a very, uh, weird game. Dynamite Hetty is an action platformer unlike any other. You play as a puppet named Hetty, and you have to save the world from the evil puppet king, Dark Demon, and some asshole wolf-looking fucker named Trouble Broom. Hetty has an unattached head, so he uses it as a weapon as well as a grappling tool. Throughout the game, you get tons of upgrade heads that do all sorts of different things. The levels in this game are so fun and unique, and the boss fights are just downright crazy. But that's part of the appeal. This game came out back in the day before people knew about zany Japanese anime and manga, so this stuff was all weird and fresh on the Genesis. This game is so fun and unique, but it's deceivingly hard as fuck at times. And I love how the game builds up this huge rivalry between Hetty and Trouble Bruin. Each time you meet, the stakes are raised and you've gotta put this dude in his place. Another neat thing about this game is that the whole thing is played out as if the game is just one giant play. The stages are all scenes, the characters are the cast, and your health, as well as the boss's health, are indicated by spotlight. Green being full health, and red to black meaning near death and dead. For having such fantastic level design and really pulling off the head tossing mechanic, Dynamite Hetty earns its spot among the best on the Genesis. Number 5 Hey guys, did you know I like Mega Man? Mega Man The Wily Wars is a remake and then some of the first three Mega Man games, but on the Genesis. This game takes everything from the original trilogy and updates the sound and graphics to the Genesis's quality. They made a few changes to the games, like Mega Man has an oddly slow speed when he starts walking or changing directions, but the major changes came in the form of the bosses. A lot of the bosses are a bit slower, which make them easier. So if you've always wanted to play the Mega Man games but found them too hard, especially the first one, this is the version for you. For some reason they made Elect Man hard as fuck in this game though. Dude is super fast and just rapid fires his attack. On top of being a graphical and audio upgrade of the originals, The Wily Wars has a fourth part to it that is a completely original story. Wily enlists some new robots to fight Mega Man and builds a big ass tower that you've gotta destroy. The baddies are based upon the story Journey to the West and make for some interesting boss fights. My favorite is fighting Buster Rod G while in a free fall going from platform to platform trying to avoid dying. Now you might be thinking, but Dookie, you love Mega Man. Why is the Wily War stuck at number 5 instead of being top 3 or something? Well, the reason is that there are a few changes to the original game that I really feel worsen the games a little. 
I mentioned the slow to start moving and direction changing speed earlier, but this is a change that you do eventually get used to. The big downside for me is that there's no mashing allowed when it comes to firing your Mega Buster. You can smash the shoot button as fast as humanly possible, and Mega Man will still only shoot at the same speed with the same time between each shot. This isn't a game breaker, but it's such a bizarre change that really takes away from the games. It makes a lot of the levels much more difficult as you can't just rapid fire your way through the enemies. You pretty much have to fire as much as the game will allow you to, then take cover for a bit before firing again. It's really weird. Overall though, this is a really good game on the Genesis and deserves its spot at number 5. Number 4 God damn this is a fun game. Gunstar Heroes is the funnest co-op game on the Sega Genesis. Possibly the funnest co-op game of the 16-bit era. In Gunstar Heroes you play as Gunstar Red and Blue, and it's up to you to take on the other color name characters of the Gunstar Dynasty. This was the first game made by the development company Treasure, and what a game to start with. These guys also made Dynamite Heady by the way. I guess the best way you could describe this game is by saying it's like taking Contra and injecting it with barely legal amounts of fun. There are a few different playstyles as well. Mostly a run and gun action game, but there's parts where you're controlling a spaceship, and parts where you're on like a minecart thingy that can like drive up walls and shit. The bosses are so unique and exciting too. You get power ups like in Contra, but in Gunstar Heroes you can take two separate power ups and combine them to make amazing, sometimes game breaking power ups. All these great things and more are what make Gunstar Heroes an easy number four on my list. To be fair, the top five here are all incredibly good games, and it was very hard to nail them down to specific numbers. I know Finney is shaking his fist at his screen right now, because Gunstar Heroes is his favorite Genesis game of all time, and one of his favorite games ever. But these next games, I just love even more. Number 3 Number 3 on the list is a game that everyone who had a Genesis probably owned. I'm of course talking about Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Taking what worked with the first game and literally running with it, Sonic 2 is a fantastic momentum based platformer. This game was a console seller for the Genesis. Anyone who played this as a kid NEEDED a Genesis. The sheer speed and smoothness of this game were enough to make it a top game on the Genesis, but the characters, level design, boss fights, and attitude lock this bad boy into the number 3 spot. This is a game that you can just play over and over again and it never seems to get old. Each stage has so many different paths you can take through them, and the stages themselves all have great designs and gimmicks that set them apart from each other. If you haven't played this game, then you probably haven't ever had or played on a Genesis before. Get yourself a Genesis or one of the multiple Genesis collections that can be found on modern consoles and play this bad boy. Number 2 Holy shit! I love this game! Castlevania Bloodlines might just be my favorite Castlevania game of all time. You get to choose between two different characters with slightly different playstyles and weaponry as you chase down some bitch that's trying to bring Dracula back into the land of the living. Your journey takes you all around Europe to multiple famous locations. A really neat thing about this game is that depending on which character you choose, there are a few branching paths which make the stage different for both characters. Eric Lacard wields a giant sexy spear that he can use to propel himself really high into the air, like some sort of super jump. John Morris, of course, wields the vampire killer whip and can use it to swing from the ceiling and jump across gaps. I personally always go with Eric because he's just so much more badass than John in my opinion, and it's nice to use a different weapon than a whip for once. Another reason I love this game so much is because I feel its difficulty level is just perfect. It's possible to beat in a single sitting, yet still very challenging. A lot of the other Castlevania games are either way too hard, or you can pretty much just beat them by putting your time in. Bloodlines is a very learn as you play game, and by that I mean you figure out your enemies and the level layout the more you play it until you finally succeed. I know you're thinking, Dookie, literally all games are like that. But I feel some of the early Castlevanias and the Mega Man games 
really excel at this stuff. If you're a fan of Castlevania games or would like to get into the series, Bloodlines is an excellent starting point. It's definitely got a different feel to it than the other classics, especially if you're playing as Eric, but it's a damn good game and I really feel it belongs at number 2 on the list. Number one. Holy shit guys, we made it all the way here to number one. The best Genesis game of all time is technically two games. Using the lock-on technology, you combine Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and Sonic and Knuckles to create the greatest game on the SEGA GENESIS! Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Damn, this game is so much fun. It takes Sonic 2's awesomeness and expands on it. The levels are better, the graphics are better, and the bosses are better. This is also the first appearance of Sonic's original rival and my favorite Sonic character, Knuckles the Echidna. You play through the game chasing after Dr. Robotnik as he tries and eventually succeeds in stealing the Master Emerald from Angel Island. Robotnik basically convinces Knuckles that Sonic and Tails are after the Master Emerald, which pisses Knuckles off and turns him against you. There's so many great stages and bosses, but one of this game's greatest features is that the whole game changes ever so slightly if you decide to change it up and play through the game as my boy Knuckles! I've always thought of the different characters as difficulty settings. A Tails solo playthrough would be easy, Sonic is normal, and because Knuckles skips leg day in order to work on his biceps, the dude jumps a bit lower than Sonic, making the game a bit harder. Unlike Sonic 2, unfortunately this game is actually quite hard to come by. Most Genesis Collection games just slap Sonic 3 on them, and you never get to play this game in its complete form. If you ever do have the resources, definitely seek this game out and play it. It will not let you down. Well, that's my top 10 Genesis games of all time, everyone. I guess I should drop a few honorable mentions before ending the video. So for those, I would have to start with Street Fighter 2 Special Championship Edition. This was the best way to play Street Fighter 2 on consoles back then, if only because of the 6-button controller. Next, I would like to mention Zombies Ate My Neighbors. This game is also on the Super Nintendo, but that console just had so many great RPGs that I didn't get a chance to mention it in my Top 10 Super Nintendo Games video. Check this game out on either console and play it with a friend. Another game I really loved on the Genesis was NBA Jam Tournament Edition. It's a super arcadey basketball game with two-on-two -two gameplay that features everyone from the Beastie Boys and the Fresh Prince to Bill Clinton and Prince Charles. And last but not least, check out two of my favorite Blake on games of all time, Lethal Enforcers 1 and 2. These games are just tons of fun, and I love me some light gun games. Thanks a lot for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, and follow me on Twitch, where I stream at least twice a week at twitch.tv slash 3 If you like this video, click that like button, and if you got some great Genesis games that weren't on the list, be sure to mention them in the comments section. See you later!